keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. That's why we come out here. We do come out here for our people, don't get it twisted. Right. We come out here for the men and the women, but when we see men listening, that is the most important thing. Right. You are the most important thing that God is trying to wake up in this day, the right. so-called black man. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men that stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready. We coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Hey. Israel, united in Christ, is a non-violent, Bible-based movement. IUIC. out here is because you you have people in town and that normally I wouldn't be out here. Normally you wouldn't but because you have people in town that's what I said. That's why you came out. Yeah. Because the most how want you to move that way. No. Alright so I'm gonna read something. But I wouldn't be listening to you I wouldn't be listening to you today. You're right. And that's that's a big thing. That's big. Because the most how want you to hear something now. Read this. Jeremiah chapter two and verse thirty three. Go ahead. Get out. Why trimmest thou thy ways to seek Love. Right, so what's your name again? Kenyahu. Kenyahu. So the Bible's asking you this again. Read it again. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? He's asking you, why are you trimming your ways now to seek love? You know what that means? How you doing, sis? How you doing? What's your name, sis? To seek love. Huh? Lisa. Lisa. It, so it sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm going out of my way to seek love. What is not of me, or not of Yah? I'm gonna read it again. Okay. I'm gonna read it again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter two, verse thirty-three. Right. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? So he's asking you, why are you trimming your ways to seek love? Right. You, what does that mean, Lisa? Oh. It says, why are you trimming your ways to seek love? It's like, why are you breaking the law to do uh, something else? Right. Your way should be the ways of the Most High. If you really, right. it, it, it doesn't matter what you what you. Believe in, right? But the thing is, if you stand on that, why are you breaking what you believe in in order to appease the person that you're with? Right. You see what I mean? Read that again. There's a heavy consequence for doing that. And this is the message that you need to hear. That's why we're here today. And that's heavy that you said. It's very spiritual. What's going on, bro? Read it again. Why trimmest thou way to seek love? Read it right, read it right. Come on. Why trimmest thou way, thou thy way to seek love? So the Bible is asking, why are we trimming our ways? to seek the love of others. We should not be trimming our ways to seek love, especially you knowing who you are. Right, right. You understand? Y'all together? We're breaking the law, yeah. Y'all together? Yeah, she was All right, read. Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones. Therefore you've also taught now the people that don't believe in this thing. Yeah. They call them wicked because they don't believe in this truth here and they're moving, they don't have the wisdom and understanding that you have. Read. Right. But taking off your example. Well, therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy way. Now you taught them your ways. And what do you think? By you coming out here breaking the Lord's Sabbath, what do you think the person that you're with? I'm not showing a good example of following the law. But how does that, what happens to them? Though? What happens to them? They, they take up after you. And their soul is destroyed. This one, they'll never turn into I this truth. But you ain't gonna stop. Right. Well, you ain't gonna stop. You ain't gonna stop. This gonna happen. Wait, our job is not to stop. You see, and you should know better. Yeah, yeah. You should know better. You ain't gonna stop. Our man. job is not to stop this from happening. Our job is to preach this gospel and warn our people of their sins and their errors and their ways and have them come back to God right. so that they don't die. Right. If, if for some reason, there's a misconception that we're out here trying to change everybody's life. No, our job is to warn our people of the destruction to come and of the consequences of breaking God's laws. Right. And you know that. 
You know that. Get Ezekiel chapter 3. Read. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Right. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. The bottom line is we are the watchmen to the house of Israel. Right. That's what you've been called to do. That's why you have that Hebrew name. That's why you know today is the Sabbath day. You understand that we are watchmen because we watch for the souls of our people. Right. We watch for the souls of our nation. That's your responsibility, brother. And our, our, our community today, the so-called black man, the black man doesn't have that. We don't have no leaders in here telling us, look, we are wrong. We need right. to stop doing what we're doing. And that's why we see the issues that we have in our community. Right. Single parent households. Our sisters dressing modestly. Our sisters needing a man to tell them, look, stop sleeping around with every brother that you deal with and find a husband. Right. They're not going to learn that if we continue to break God's laws and trim our ways because we want them to like us. Read again. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Our job is to give our people warning. We know that our people don't want to hear this. We, we see the looks of a brother walk past, we offered him a flyer, and he looked at us with the worst attitude possible. He's like, I don't want to hear that ish or whatever, you know what I mean? Get away from me. He don't know no better. He, no, he does know better. He knows that he's a wicked as hell and the devil that the Bible speaks of. Right. Because I've never seen a nation of people so degenerate he don't know to where right. brothers is teaching the Bible to him. He don't know he's telling them right. to stop stealing, stop whoring yourself out, stop doing drugs, and stop dressing immodestly and stop breaking God's laws and we're turned into a eat. We're the people that they don't like. Right. They right. don't want to hear that thing. And it's our job as leaders to step up and stand tall for the most high. Right. We right. cannot trim our ways because we got a, a visitor out of town and because all we're teaching them is that this truth here ain't about nothing. And I stand for nothing. And then the words in this Bible, my name, everything that, I, that I'm preaching means absolutely nothing. And they're never going to change their ways. You understand that? Read it from the top again. Verse 7, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Right. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Right. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Our job is to give our brothers and sisters warning of the death to come. Get Matthew 5. Because it's, it's a serious issue now. There's a consequence for teaching our people the wrong way. Right? So when you trim your ways, you teach them your ways, right? You teach them to go against God. There's a consequence for that. Get Matthew 5, you know what I want. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So now you're breaking one of these least commandments, the basic commandments. Thou shalt not buy and sell on the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. By you knowing better and you doing it because you want to seek the love of your guests, we're teaching them these things. We're teaching them to break God's laws. Read. Right. And shall teach men so. And when you teach men so, so would you agree that trimming your ways teaches them your way? That's what the Bible says, right? So read it again from the top. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So when we break one of these least commandments to trim our ways because we want other people to like us, we want our mother to like us, we want our sister to like us, we want our girlfriend to like us, we want our cousins to like us, we don't want them to to hate the fact that we've changed our lives. Read. Right. And shall teach men so. And when we teach men to do these things, what happens? He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. What does that mean, brother? What does it mean to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven? The least means, really, you ain't gonna be in there. You ain't gonna be in there. I'm gonna show you the least. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, let me happen? ask you a question, bro. Uh, How long you been in this? Hold on, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Finish it off. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you have an opportunity to repent right now. Even though you may have broken it, you out here buying and selling, guess what? That's the beauty of Christ though. Because now you learn better, you like, you know what? Let me get the hell out of here till the sun go down. You know I mean? And let me do the right thing. Right now with your whole shot, I'm not, well I don't wanna say I'm not. No, go ahead, what you got? I say it, no, say it, say it, say it. Y'all almost say, let me say I'm not perfect. No, I just, I I just, how long you been in this? For about nine years. I made it for about six, seven. Right. So, you know, I know I know what I'm doing is wrong. Like I say, normally I would be on a Zoom call in my past. Good. So I got it, man. But now, you, 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 you can move on now. You can move on right? now. Well, I'm going to show just, you what the least in the kingdom of heaven is, right? Yeah. I'm going to show you that because our job is to warn you, right? Just to make sure. Listen, you may not be with our camp. That's fine. You're still our brother. I know all Right? But what we want to show you is the consequences for what you're doing now. So guess what that brings upon you? 
It brings upon the fear of God. Listen, we're all under Christ. As long as the Most High does not put you to death and you don't reject this truth, you'll be fine. We don't do the Christ thing or the L-O-R-D or the G-O-D. We, we do Yahushua, Siakwa. That's heavy. But but see, no, but now you follow the Greeks and stuff and okay. start talking about uh, okay. G, G, well, Jesus Christos. Christos is Kros, right? Christos? I don't know that, what that is. Well, you know, that came from the Greeks. Okay. Now I'm teaching. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's where Christ came from. Now you see what you're harping on. No. You're harping on a name and a language instead of, and you're out here breaking the God Sabbath. Right. So you're teaching me a name, but then you now you're going to, you want to get on me. You're teaching me a name, but you're not dealing with the laws. But you're calling on the wrong name, bro. That, that's an idol. Christ. So is there a consequence for me calling Christ Jesus or whatever? Yeah. Compared to you breaking the Sabbath. That's what you're telling me. Huh? Is that what the Bible nah, says? The Sabbath is the most important thing between read us. That. I that's know what the Bible that. It's the most important thing between All us. Right, read but we don't do Zephaniah, Christ. Look at Zephaniah. Chapter, look at Zephaniah, that chapter 3 and verse 8. Therefore, wait upon me, said the Lord. The Most High says, wait upon me, the road. read. That's Until the day that I rise up to the prey. Allow, allow the scripture to come out. Prophecy. Let the script come out, though. He was talking to me. Let him read the script. Read. Therefore, wait ye upon me, said the Lord, mm -hmm. until the day that I rise up to the prey. So it says, until the day that I rise up to the prey, read. But my determination is to gather the nations. So his determination is to gather the nations. You can only gather the nations with preachers what's, that are set out to do that, read. That I may assemble the kingdoms to, to pour upon them mine indignation, uh -huh. even all my fierce anger. Go ahead. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. That's what's going to happen. Read. Promise. It is, read. For then, keep that in mind. It's a future prophecy. It's a future prophecy. Oh, I get it. Keep I get that in mind. Go. I get it. For then, he says for what? For then, at that time, what is he going to do? Will I turn to the people a pure language? A pure language, because we're not speaking. There's no pure Hebrew out here today. Right. right. There's no pure Hebrew. Elashuan Kadash is not the pure Hebrew. Right. The right. name that you have now is not the pure right. Hebrew. Read. You going from the that King they James. may all that we may what? That they may all call upon the name of the Lord. To serve it. him with one consent. Right? Why do you think that is? Why, why, what would possess a woman to roll up in a, in a group? Men don't even come at us like that. You notice that, right? right. Even the scoffer that was up here talking foolishness, he didn't he didn't just rush to the camp like that. Right. But that, that sister, she felt the need to be like, I'm going to walk through them and behind them and come straight through. Why do you think our women deal with us like that? Bad experiences. Huh? Like bad experiences. Bad experience with black men, they don't respect you, black man. That's right. Because we're not conducting ourselves as men. Give me that new thing on the earth real quick. A woman shall pass a man. Jeremiah. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Go ahead. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. The sister walked past, she said, the, the black woman does everything. Well, if the black woman does everything, look at the result of what having a black woman do everything yeah. for our community is. Right. Right. Look at the right. result. Right. We have effeminate men, we have grown men that don't have jobs, and they get to rule over us. We have gangbangers, drug dealers all over the place. That is the result of our women doing everything, quote unquote, in our society, right? Read that again. O thou backsliding daughter, Go ahead. for the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. There's a new thing on the earth, because what do you think the old way was? What do you think the way the most, how did the most high ordain a relationship between a man and a woman supposed to be? Who are you supposed to be, black man? You're supposed to be a leader, right? So Moses said there's a new thing on the earth. Read. A woman shall compass a man. A black woman now has compassed us. They make more money than us now. Right. They got more jobs. They, they're the ones working and supporting our families right. while we sit around homeless, right. jobless, right. Um, playing damn video games, popping, sleeping with every woman, not taking care of our children. Right. Breaking God's laws for men is what we're doing now. Right. To, to the point where we have our women now Feeling like they could just rush the camp. Right. When a grown man wouldn't even do that. That should that should piss you off. You should be ashamed. You should want the answers to now how do I become that man? How do I break that cycle? Right. You understand that we're showing you love. Read that again. 
A woman shall compass a man. Our women now has compassed us. Now you should want the, you should want to know how now do I become a man that these women can't do that too? How do I get my community get back? You know what I want? First Kings eight. Bring it out. No, no, First Kings two. First Kings. Chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. I go the way of all the earth. Go ahead. Be thou strong, therefore. It says, be thou strong, therefore. What is the state of the black man today? What is the state of our men? Spiritually. Are we strong as men? If our women are running our households, who's the strong ones in our household? Who's the dominant in the black man's household? Right. Who? You are in your household. You sure about that? You married? So then you're not. You're not over your household because you haven't even had that woman to take your name yet. That woman doesn't even want to be known as, as a part of you, one flesh with you. If you're not married to her, guess what? You're not showing yourself as a man of your household. You understand this? So who's over our households? You're homeless? So then you're not, you don't even have a house. Now I'm not talking it to, to put you down. I'm not saying this to belittle you, right? Hey sis, hey, ask that sister a question. Hey sis, how you doing? Is a marriage between a man and a woman 50-50? Buzzy. -50? Real quick, yes or no? No. No? So how is a marriage supposed to be? 100-100. One, okay, so it's equality in the marriage, right? That's right. And that is the problem. God right. doesn't, has not created us to be equal but with the woman. No, no, no. God has not created marriage for a man to be equal with a woman. Right. Read that now, read it again. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Go I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore. It says put off the weak nature, black man. Right. It says be strong, black man. Because right. right now, if you're not, if you're just lying down with a woman and you're not married to her, guess what? You're moving weak. Right. If you're homeless and you can't support yourself, you're weak. Right. If you're not dealing with your people and you're not teaching your people, you're not keeping God's laws, you're not strong. You are weak. Right. You're weak to God. You're weak to Christ. You're weak to your women. Right. And that's why they can feel like walking past here and just walk up on a brother. If we would have put our hands on her, who would look bad? We would. Because physically we're more dominant than them. Right. But spiritually, they know that they have us in a choke code now. Our women are ruling over us and the only way to stop it is by this. Read it again. Be thou strong, therefore. So be strong and do what? And show thyself a man. Be a man. I'm be a right. man. Be a godly man. Right. Show yourself a man by marrying that woman that is in your household. Right. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. And keep the charge of the Lord. Keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. That's why we come out here. We do come out here for our people. Don't get it twisted. Right. We come out here for the men and the women. But when we see men listening, that is the most important thing. Right. You are the most important thing that God is trying to wake up in this day. The right. so-called black man. The right. Hispanic man. Read. To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. That's how we become strong black men and start taking over our community. The most high is working on work. Get Isaiah 13, verse 12. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. The Most High is working a work today. Right. We're going to take the hits. We're going to take the people spitting at us. We're going to take the people wanting to fight us for you. Right. For you. We're doing that. We're putting our lives on the line so that you can see that thing, read the Bible, and start changing your life and become a man. Yes. Right. You understand that? Read that. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 12. Go ahead. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. The Most High is going to make you, black man, more precious than fine gold gold. Right. That woman is no longer going to disrespect you if you're ready to become a man. Right. What did the Bible say a strong man would do? What did the Bible say a strong man would do, bro? You all remember he said, keep the charge of God. Keep the commandments of God. Right? Read that again. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Read. Even a man than the gold of wedge. Excuse me. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. How is the Most High going to do that for us? How is he going to do that for you, brother that's homeless? Right? We may look at you as being a homeless man and be like, oh, I'm homeless. We're putting me down. You, I'm lost right now. No, there's hope for you. Right. You understand that? Because the Most High commands you to get a job, commands you to work. And if you truly seek God, 
guess what's going to happen? He's going to make a way for you to serve him and to be a man of the Lord. You must understand that. But you cannot rest on being homeless. You can't rest on, on having a girlfriend and things of that nature. You understand that? You got to see what the Most High says and start applying those things to your life. Get the, get the order in marriage real quick, Corinthians 11. Bring it out. Our job is to teach. No, good. And you're not supposed to remain homeless long, right? right. And if you if you really repent, you have brothers and sisters. There's a community there to uplift the black man right. that has right. resources to help one another. Right. No, it's not for a handout. We don't hand out sandwiches. We're right. not just giving you money so that you can take care of yourself. But right. we're teaching you how to live. Right. You heard the saying, um, you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, right? But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. Right. That's what we're doing. This is the words of life right here. Right. When you get taught these things and you start dealing, then you'll be able to move as a man. Bring it it's out. a constant process. Read that, second, 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse three. This Bring is the out. order of a marriage. When you get married, you must understand that thing. You are over that woman. You are that hedge that brings her to Christ. Her praise does not go through unless she has a righteous man above her dealing with Christ. You understand that? That's how important the black man is to our community. That's why our community is so jacked. We just had about eight, nine women dressed like prostitutes come up in our face and act like they have the answers to our situation. Acting like our situation is, is their situation is great. You know why it is? Because they hate God and they hate you, black man. They don't know God. They don't know God. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So guess what? The head of every man is who? It's Christ. Which Christ, though? You think, you think this man here, the one that puts you in shackles and chains, is your head? Is that the Christ you're supposed to pray to? So what Christ? What color is your God? What does your God look like? Exactly. Your God looks just like you. That's, first, that's the first thing. That's why that, that ornament that you had on your neck was very important to get off your neck. Because that teaches you lies. You understand that? It teaches you to remain a weak black man on instead of a strong Israelite man of God. You understand that? Read. That the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the what? Is the man. The head of the woman is the what? The man. So how did God set the order up? The, it, the head of man is Christ. And the head of the woman is a man is a marriage 50-50, brother. Is a marriage 50-50? Are you supposed to take orders from your wife? No, right? Are you supposed to give orders to your wife and direct her path? That doesn't mean it's a, it's a, a slave contract, right? It doesn't mean that you, you got her in a chain and you just dragging her around and telling woman, do what you do what I tell you to do. I mean, you do say do what I tell you to do, but guess what? You are her hedge because she is not capable of dealing on her own spiritually. Look at, again, we keep saying it, look at how our people are when our women are on top of our nation. Bring it up. Look at our nation. Most I need you black men to step up. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So there's no Trinity doctrine either. It's God, Christ, man, woman. Right. In the black community today, they're worshiping Satan, woman, then man. You understand that is of the devil. Your union right now that you have is of the devil. Until you make that woman an honorable, virtuous woman and not whore her out. You understand yes, that? Right. Give me that marriage is honorable. Then I'll let you. Give me that marriage is honorable real quick. Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. God Bring does not up. deal with boyfriend and girlfriend. Read. Marriage is honorable in all. It says marriage is honorable in all. What's your name again, bro? Eric. Eric. God says marriage is honorable and all. You live with the sister? Oh, no, I don't have a girlfriend. You don't have a girlfriend? Si, you said you're the head of your house. I mean, you guys, I'm the head of my, I mean, I'm the head of my house. I mean, I was living yeah. with someone, and I recently uh, had to cut it off. Oh, you was house. living with someone, yeah. and it didn't, I, you I had to cut it off. Had, I recently had to cut it off because I didn't agree with oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what was going on, and I'm not going to live with... I'm not if you don't mind me asking, what was going on? Why did you have to leave him? Why'd you have to leave? Not to get too personal, because we got to wrap up. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get too personal, but it was just stuff that I didn't agree with, that I didn't think morally. I didn't want to around my kids, and I don't agree with raising my children that way. So you do have children? Yeah, so then I ended up cutting it off, and I said, you can lead them to the water, but you I'll leave my house drink. the way I want to, and it's not going to be with somebody else in it, and not following what I want to do. Right, and then what happened now? Is the children with her or with you? Uh, 
with her right now. It's with her right now. So now you're not in the household with your children. You see how you see how heavy it is when 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 we do things out of order, we get those results. And not not saying that you you're not taking care of your children. Not, we don't know your situation, right? But when that house is divided, how are them who is who is the one raising those children from day to day? It's going to be her, right? And then what happens? What's the result when that woman is the main main influence in them children's lives? It's, it's what we have now in our community. You understand that? You understand that? Right? A disorder in marriage destroys our community. You want to read that again? Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The reason why now your children now have living in separate homes, that's a judgment from God. You understand that, right? Because right. the union was not placed by God. It wasn't placed on, I want to I want to deal with her according to God. I want to marry this sister. I want to prove her to make sure that she's a God-fearing woman. That she wants to actually follow what this Bible says so that when I do lay down with her and make children with my wife, I know that she's not going to go against God's laws. Right. And then we don't have that dysfunction in our community. You understand that? So that part of that is judgment. It doesn't mean it can't be fixed. It doesn't mean that your children can't get guided correctly. But the first thing you got to do, what's the first thing you got to do? You got to turn to the Most High God. You got to repent. You got to start living your life for God. That's and then you right. may meet another sister in righteousness that you get that you don't sleep with until you get married and have more children. You understand it? That doesn't mean abandon the children that you do have now, right? But the fact that them children now have to wake up in the morning and mommy and daddy is not home, it's a judgment based off of the actions that you took that you right. took prior to making them children. You understand that? It doesn't mean that it's over. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with roles.